Hey there guys, Headphones Neil here, back with my, or back with an Android game review. So in this case, it's going to be the game Stranger Things 3 based on the third season of the show of the same name on Netflix. So I played it on the um, Android platform, as I mentioned, but it's also available for many other platforms, including the Nintendo Switch, Steam, iOS, and all of that. So it's available all over the place to play. And overall, I will say that the game was pretty good. Um, I will say that it improves in certain areas over the first game, like slightly improved graphics. So while Stranger Things One was kind of along those lines of a, along the lines of an eight-bit game like the NES, Stranger Things Three is more sixteen-bit, so kind of like the Super Nintendo. So that's kind of the perspective as far as what they did with the graphics updates. Um, as far as gameplay. Um, there's no um, speeding through levels or the, through the maps like we saw in the first one. For, so, for example, I think it was Mike who had his bike. But in this case, um, rather than one big map um, of Hawkins, we have various locations to that you walk to, kind of, but they have an animation. So rather than having to walk all over the map, you're, it's kind of like a pseudo teleporting system. So you you can you um, go to the end of that particular map, and then you can switch from, for example, um, the Cerebro area, um, Starcourt Mall, the suburbs, uh, Hopper's house, and all of those various locations. So rather than having to walk around, you can easily just go to those places and walk around those individual maps. As far as the game itself, it's split up into eight chapters where you get progressively harder bosses to fight. So for example, you start off easy with Mrs. Driscoll at her farm, but you do end up having to um, defeat the Mind Flayer in the last chapter and along also along, also along with uh, Grigori. So um, that's down in the secret Russian base. So um, as you play the game, you not only pick up the various characters and um, continue to pick up items like the first game, so money and objects and things like that, but the game introduces a crafting system, so not only do you have to um, finish your task, but you have to build items in order to um, complete certain areas. So, for example, you need to buy pipes to complete certain areas. You have to use certain characters to get through doors, so like locked doors, you have to use... Um, Jonathan or um, his mom. Um, you have to, you can use, and then um, characters have different um, benefits. So like Dustin has his spray can that is good for um, killing the rats and rodents and the uh, small goblins or the small things that are that come out of out of the mind flare. Um, Steve Harrington has his ice cream scoops, but also melting um, poison so that. Um, you can, if you toss that at your enemy, that it gives them a higher destructive damage. So things like that are improvements over the first game. Um, you also get um, power ups or boosts. So um, these are done by the way of trinkets. So as you play the game, you get various upgrades. So things like defense bonus via shields or a pat or a shoulder pads. Um, certain damage bonus increases, health bonus increases, and things like that. So when you equip those trinkets, you get those benefits. So when you're on a particular really hard level, it's good to have the uh, power or the health bonus. So that way your character's life lasts longer. Um, if you have the attack bonus, then your various attacks are multiplied. And there's some that are um, universal for all characters, but there are some that are specific to characters like Max and Eleven. So, by equipping them, you and if you use those char or by equipping the trinkets and using those characters, you get those different benefits when you're using them in the game. So overall, it's a pretty good game. It's pretty long. It feels like it was longer than the first game, but I didn't go back and actually look. So after a while, you can get sort of around chapter like five or six, you begin to wonder how much is left. But there are eight chapters, and a lot of the time is. Um, spend going around the various maps. So the uh, localized area maps are your friend to help you gauge where you're at, find out what you need to do, see, check for like in your fear in the bases to see if certain doors are open or closed, see if lights are on or off and things like that to navigate. When you're in the suburbs, for example, it's good to see which house you're at and where they're generally located and how far or close you are to the swimming pool. So things like that help, but it is a relatively long game and 
the one thing to notice or the one thing to know going into the game is as you get trinkets make sure you equip them regardless of how easy or hard the level might be so that you can easily get through them and defeat the bosses uh later i didn't start equipping them until later in the game so um a couple of the bosses would have been easier but um, it doesn't help you get me or help you become more creative um in defeating those bosses so, so you know where you need to stand what you need to do and which characters are better or worse at defeating those bosses so overall i give the game a grade of about a b plus to an a minus it was overall pretty good but navigation for me i just didn't like it so it's nothing detrimental to the game but it makes the game that much longer but it does keep the game with that retro feel of um, ha giving it an expansive feel um, while in a retro environment so overall the good the game is good it mostly matches what we see in the show and then introducing things like the trinkets and power-ups and um, various other elements and then also a level like the um, car the uh, fairground so you can um, or I, actually I don't remember offhand if the fairgrounds were in the show but um, there were certain elements that are new and different there, so you do get um, all the various environments and areas in the town to play through. So overall, I do recommend giving it a, pl a playthrough. It is, as I mentioned, it is a pretty long game, so um, you should anticipate um, if you do play that it's going to be take a while to get through unless for you um, it's that much easier to play. Um, as far as, and actually that's really about it, so if you played the first one, then you kind of know what to expect when you play this, play the second, the Stranger Things 3, um, but beyond that, um, there's not really much else to say about the game, it's pretty straightforward, so if you've watched the show, you'll also know what to expect, um, so for me, just really going into it know that you're going to have to spend a lot of time uh walking around just like the first game it's going to take some time and um you but overall the game is enjoyable it's pretty fun um i can't really com say complain too much about the game so um definitely check it out and uh, let me know what you think. Um, in the show notes, I will have a link to the gameplay video. So if you want to check out um, how it looks, I got the various levels. I have them broken down into various parts and their chapters. And they're all um, listed there so you can jump around to see what um, areas of the game you want to play. And if there's certain parts you're having trouble with, then... Um, you can also check that out as well. Um, I was going to look, try and look up um, how much the game costs but on Android and iOS, but it's not letting me see the cost of the game well since I've already um, purchased it. But overall, it's a good game, definitely worth playing, and... Um, if you enjoy the show, then you will enjoy the game. So that's all there is for this particular review. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or anything like that, you can find me on Twitter at PatelN01. The website is PatelN01.com for um, past episodes, subscription links, supporting the show, and all of that good stuff. But that is all for this particular review. Thanks for tuning in, and until next time.